it's Ray, and today I will be talking about the poster art of the 60s, the kind that you would see for all these shows, for Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix and all the artists of the 60s and the 70s. Um, I don't know a whole bunch on this topic, but I know what I know and I know what inspires me personally. But if you want to know more about it, Vox has a video on their YouTube channel about it. So head over to their channel or just look it up, uh, Vox Art Nouveau, um, because I will be only talking about the art styles um, of the 60s poster that has influenced me. Before I get started, I want to give huge creds to this book. It's called Rock Graphic Originals. It's by Peter Golding with Barry Miles. And this book is seriously awesome if you want to know more about the art from years 1955 to 1988. So there's so much information in it and there's just so much inspiration as an artist uh, in it. It's totally worth the price. It's really not that expensive for such a big book with so much information in it. I knew about Art Nouveau before I read this book, but this book has opened even more doors of inspiration for the artwork that I do. So I want to shout out this book and it's awesome. So I would definitely recommend getting this book if you wanna know more. And yeah, so as you can see, I got my Art Nouveau cup and I'm ready to go. So the first artist that I'm going to be talking about that has inspired me personally is a guy named Wes Wilson, and he did a whole bunch of poster art in the 1960s. And I just love his art because I love the patterns that he chooses, and I just love how much the colors pop, in my opinion. And yeah, he's just really influenced my poster art personally, and also the art that I've done on Will's guitars. Another person who has inspired me less on the guitars that I've painted and more on the posters I've created is a guy by the name of Victor Moscaso. He's super cool and he has a really cool approach to art because he chooses three colors to really focus on and it's weirdly like it's such a simplistic way to go in but it makes such cool artwork and it's just crazy how cool the art can be with just three colors. So um, I'll put up a picture. You probably recognize this one, um, but yeah, he's super cool too. Some other favorites of mine that have either inspired me or I just really like are this one uh, by Lee Conklin. This one, which was based on a painting by Alphonse Mucha. Um, I couldn't find who did the 60s psychedelic rework of it though. And I tried really hard to find it and I could not find it anywhere. So if you know who did it, comment down below and let me know. Uh, and then this one by Dennis Nolan. Anyways, here's some of my own personal work that has been inspired by these amazing artists. So this guitar is my boyfriend's favorite guitar that I've painted. Um, her name is Eve and I painted her with just acrylic paint because, and it's like the, the cheap kind of acrylic paint that you like buy at like Michael's for like literally like, I don't know, 69 cents or something like that. 99 cents, I don't know. But um, really cheap, basically. And um, I wanted to paint it with acrylic because I knew it would wear away easier than gloss. And I thought it would give it like a really cool, like rustic look to be worn away from like all the pick marks and just like the scratches from like moving his arm with like bracelets on or whatever. Um, but yeah, this is a Fender Strat, and I painted another one for him that was the exact same design, but in black. And um, this is with, I think this is actually with gold. 
gloss paint. Yeah, it is. This is with black gloss paint, and this is a uh, like a backup, um, just in case, because you know the cars go out of tune, and like sometimes there's technical issues. But um, yeah, it's basically the same exact guitar, just painted differently in a different color. And yeah, okay, so finishing off the strats, this guitar's name is Eddie. Um, my boyfriend says his name is Eddie based off of Eddie Brock. Personally, I think it's named after Eddie Vedder. No, not Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> For all you Van Halen fans out there. Um, the flowers that are on it are um, based off of like the 60s, 70s artwork. Um, it's a little darker than our usual style, but I did paint this one a while back um, further back than a lot of the other ones I'm showing you. Uh, it has like little buttons in the middle too, just to represent our band name, Rain the Ragdolls. And then it has a lyric on it from one of our songs, Pennies, Nickels, Dimes, which, by the way, if you want to check it out, is on Spotify, YouTube, any platform you can think of. So if you're interested in that, check us out. Here is the back. It just has a cute little message that I wrote to, oh wait, yeah, a cute little message that I wrote to my boyfriend and also some of the song lyrics as well. Um, yeah, so there's that one. So this next guitar is named Tangerine based off of the Led Zeppelin song. And um, she is a 12 string Strat, which I've never seen before. So that's super weird, but also it's super cool and it sounds great. I base the flowers off of the you know, typical flower power type movement of the 60s. Um, and I thought that orange was like the best color to represent flower power because orange to me just like screams flower power in 60s. So I painted it with this orange gloss paint and then I painted these flowers on it. Um, and they are white and brown. I'll show you guys closer up photos of these guitars, but um, yeah, it's super cool and I love this guitar. It's probably one of my favorites personally. So this next guitar is a Fender Telecaster. Her name is Penny and um, she is based off of wallpaper Paisley guitars. They would actually take paisley wallpaper and then they would put it on the guitar and then they would spray lacquer on it um, in the late 60s. So I based the design mainly off of that because my boyfriend's always wanted a paisley telecaster but the vintage ones which are the best sounding ones and the best looking ones cost a good amount of money so I decided to paint something for him that he would like and we asked my Instagram followers like what should we paint on this one? And someone gave us an idea of nature and sigil, and those are the ones that got like the highest votes. We did like a poll thing on my story for it. So, um, to like interpret the, the nature on the guitar, I painted some flowers on it, and then for the sigil idea, which was another one of my followers' ideas, we did a glamour sigil on the back. So this guitar is a pre-lawsuit Ibanez V um, and the art on it is inspired by Jimi Hendrix's Black Flying V, um, which I will insert a photo right here. Uh, but yeah, we wanted to also embrace the love thing Again, the flower power culture of the 60s and the 70s. So I painted a bunch of hearts on it. And then just for our fans, we put this on the back to show them while we were performing. It says, we love you in psychedelic writing. So this guitar is a Dan Electro. And um, even though the 60s and the 70s were 
really largely like they like base their color palette on like huge bright like just flamboyant colors um i wanted to just appreciate the earthy tones for a second um so that's why i painted this one brown it was originally gold and you can still see some of the gold that's on it um and then for the actual design i painted a flower on the pick guard with brown and tan like a tannish white type of color and then the words on it say look at mother nature on the run in the 21st century which if you know is based on a song by Neil Young called After the Gold Rush where he sings look at mother nature on the run in the 1970s and I just wanted to really add that because I am a huge nature advocate and environment advocate so I really appreciate that lyric and I wanted to give it some props by painting it on this guitar. This bass is loosely uh, based on <laughs> based um, on David Bowie uh, and like his just obsession with space and stars and the moon uh, and also based on the posters of the 60s and it also just really like uh, like capitalizes on like the uh, like shape of the base, like how I like did the like curves and stuff, like the lines kind of with the curvature of the base. Um, but yeah, uh, it's super cool, and I love my base. Okay, so most of my posters are actually hung up on the walls around my house, so I'm just gonna be walking around my house and showing you guys the posters. Um, so I'll start over here. This is a poster that I made for a Halloween show with Eliza Neals that we had at Smith's Old Bar. What I'll typically do which I didn't do with this poster, is I'll leave a space to like write all the details. So like, Ray and the Ragdolls at blank with blank, or Ray and the Ragdolls, this person at blank. But like, literally like this, like this is the original, and then this is the edit after I wrote all this stuff out. But with this one, I just wrote all of it because I wanted a cool font that was like original looking and not just like a regular font. So yeah, with that one, that's what I did. And what we'll usually do after we finish them is we'll go to like Office Max or Office Depot, wherever you wanna go. Um, and we'll get like a slick, like version done and they'll just print out a whole bunch. Um, and the reason why we get the ones that are like slick is because rain will fall off of them instead of like soaking them and like ruining them. Um, but yeah, so there are these two. This is the next one, I haven't used it yet, but it's just like a UFO. And I'm planning on writing all the stuff like in this theme. And then this is one, we use this one for a show, um, our Burial Ground Blues release show. Um, and then on this one, we haven't used this one yet, but this is definitely one of my favorites, and I can't wait to use this one, honestly, because I love this poster. This is probably like one of my favorites that I've made. And then this is one that we use for my stir fry, which was our first show ever as a band. And then there's just these ones, which are more plain. Um, so like, usually what I'll do is I'll like, send my poster idea to someone 
And just in case I ever have someone I'm playing with, or that we're playing with, um, that like wants something a little more plain and less like gaudy and out there, I painted this one. This is kind of like this fade of orange into red. And then this one, which is just this black with like this gold circle in the middle. And then two of my other favorites on this wall are this one it says you're in for a treat and I'm going to like write all the band names over here and then this one which says enjoy the magic and this is honestly probably my favorite after that one um, and yeah I'm just going to like write the band names like right here and all the details around here where there's room so yeah so that's all I have to show you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to love that like button, hit subscribe, and if you want notifications of any future uploads, make sure to hit the bell button. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram name is at Ray underscore Chibiv, and my band's Instagram name is at Ray and the Ragdolls. Uh, we release music that is based off the sound of the 60s and the 70s, so if you're super into the 60s, in the 70s like I am, make sure you guys go listen to it. It's on Spotify, YouTube, all sorts of different platforms. Um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.